kindly like the video and subscribe our channel for daily updates so yesterday we just uh, took an introduction to our sql server and we saw how to create table we saw how to create columns primary key unique key there are few things which are which were left out like identity column setting default value creating check constraints so we will just try to see that we have our management studio i am starting that database that we created yesterday was organization db right so we have tables yes our our db yeah and employee table i'll just go for design how to make a column as identity column say employee id i want to make it as an identity column the first thing that identity column means column that will have auto generated values one two three or something so first thing is it should be of type integer the column should be of type integer select that column look into the column properties scroll on should find identity specifications i'll explore this is identity is no i'll change it to yes now it says identity seed is one so it should start from one increment by one so identity seed i'll make it to thousand so it will start from thousand increment by one but if i want to make these changes now let me say save and see what it says so identity seed is thousand incrementing by one now i'll right click and say edit top 200 rows already we have one and two there is no problem because they are of type integer so we do not have any issue but now this value i cannot insert anything because it is auto generated i'll say bob mail bob at gmail.com <coughs> 7000 plus dd mmyy dd mmyy see you get 1000 right <coughs> Next, I'll add one more record. Lily, email, lily at gmail dot com. There is an error because it is invalid date. It is an invalid value. Fine. So all the validations that we were expecting we have with us. This is clear. Simple thing, right? This is your identity column. If I delete this record, right? Now I'll create another record. Mark. So select the record, press delete, it will delete the record. what is the new value so you can never expect that it will again go for 1000 but because it is auto incremented it has got incremented and it has left so you cannot control that that's why normally we do not put our uh, primary keys like employee ID, department ID we do not put it as identity so we use some columns in our transaction tables as identity where IDs are not very important yeah employee ID is very important right so what is transaction table and in what situation we should use we'll see that in our you know future sessions now constraints if i want to apply a constraint employee salary should not be negative right i'll just right click 
and I will say check constraint. I'll say add. In expression, I'll just click over here and here I'll write. On what column am I adding? This is email. Yeah. Okay. I'll just but anyway, even if we go for any column or if, if you can just right click anywhere, it is no, not related to any column. Anywhere you can just right click and say check constraint. Okay, okay. Say add expression. And here I'll say salary should be greater than zero. Say okay. Salary is the column name. It should be greater than yeah. zero. And I'll say close and I'll save this. Now I'll execute this. If I write minus 9000, now you'll have a issue so that the value should not be column salary conflict occurred in the database table column salary conflicted with check constraint so it was checking but normally normally we do not write these constraints in our applications because you will handle all these things on the UI or in our business logic so we try to make our database as much simple as possible. See, if I write check constraints, today if I design database and write check constraints, tomorrow a new developer is working on it. They do not know the check constraints. They cannot go to each and every table and or you know, they need to, they need not to uh, worry much about learning about the database structure. They'll just see that we have table structure and these are the columns. All these validations will perform in our programming on UI client side validations in our C sharp programming server side validations we will perform all these validations over there but we have this option so I thought of showing you but it is not a uh, it is not suggested to add check constraints in your database design but identity columns wherever it is required you can add it and default values you can add it wherever it is required so for example is active I'll select is active column I'll explore, uh, I'll just move out, move up and is active, default value, I'll just say one. <coughs> if I do not write any value, it will take one. So that is the default value. If I skip that, it will take one. See, the errors that we are getting, these are very important. You read the error, try to understand what is happening. So that tomorrow if you are into development, when you see some error, so these are the errors that your application is going to throw when you are working on real-time projects. Once you read the error, you should get an idea what is the problem or what is the issue that we are facing. So that's why I'm showing all these errors. Now I'll skip this. So it requires an execution because there are two values that it has to generate. Now I'll just right click and say execute. It is 1003 and default value is it has got updated. Fine. So this is uh, your default value. Now I'll just select this tab, uh, database, right click and I'll say new query. If I want to write a query on the database, this is what we are doing manually. But I need to write queries, right? So I can right click and say new query. So here, this is the query window and above available databases drop down list you have. From here you should make sure that we have selected the database on which we are trying to write the query. Right? Now here I can write a query. 
for this i'll just take this function it is not uh, very important for the developer but i thought just to show this select star from function db log this is your log file i told you that we created database and we created log file database we can see but how to see your log file so this is the function to read your log file so we may not be able to understand everything but we will try to see few things that we have done which is available in your log file we inserted rows so you see that inserted rows you have that information we modified some rows we committed some changes so lot of log entries whatever we have done it is available here we deleted few rows right the database. This, no not all this is about this particular database this log file information related to this database not to all databases <laughs> so dbs will make use of this information we have altered the tables so it has all the information so this is your log file it will be helpful for dbs to recover something if we we lost something fine now moving ahead i hope you should not have any doubt doing all these basic things so for any project you need to know all these things what is primary key why do we create primary key what is unique key why do we create unique key so all these things you should know now the important type uh, important thing is data types yesterday we have seen few things integer float so what are the various data types and what are the various options that we have and what are the best practices that we normally use in our projects so we will see all those things data type is see if if we talk in terms of programming if i say int i int i it means what i am telling compiler to allocate me some space in the ram where i will be storing integer and that value is being referred by i it means that i is the address or i is referring to a location in the ram where i am going to store integer it means that int i means that so what are the values that we store what types of data that we store so basically we have you know the very uh, you can say famous type of data is a string or you can say text and second numbers and third date time and fourth boolean type true or false and zero or one that is true or false and binary we have zeros and ones if if there is an image we want to store the image in the database so how do we store we convert that into binary data and store it into the database but it is not a best practice good practice to store images into the database normally we store images or files in our disk file system and we store path in the database that is what we normally do videos we have we never normally we do not store videos into the database because it will occupy lot of space so instead of using sql server space let us use file system space store the video in the file file system on the disk and let us store the path in the database but if there are some scenarios where you want to store uh, the file or the video or the image in your database then we convert it into binary so these are the famous data types xml is also there we, we hardly use that so the first major thing is string 
Now, if I want to store string, what are the various options that we have? One is char. If I say char, if we understand one part, then it is uh, easy for us to understand every part or every type of data. If we understand single thing, one is char of n means what fixed non unicode fixed means if i say char 10 it will take 10 locations in the memory that is fixed if you store a word of two letters even then it is going to take 10 spaces are you getting my point so it is fixed char means it will not store universal characters non unicode universal character means i cannot store arabic character i cannot store chinese character in this i can store normal or english characters it means non unicode have you understood these two things fixed and non unicode whenever i say care of that particular size means it is fixed and it is non unicode if you have understood this then you will understand rest of the things easily Second is var char, var char, variable length of characters. That means if you say var char 10, it will not occupy 10 spaces. If you store a word of two letters, it will take only two spaces. If you store a word of three letters, it will take three spaces. To max, you can store 10 spaces or 10 characters. So length is variable, but to max you have given n. But again it is non-unicode. That means you cannot store universal characters in this. Next is n char. Now n char, char means fixed. N means now it will take universal characters. You can store Arabic, you can store Chinese, you can store Hindi. Telugu any language characters in your database if you say n char but char means fixed length again same in the same way n var char variable length universal code both the things is this clear and in your large scale applications large scale application we use n var char say for example for var char, if it is occupying one location, for n var char, it will take two locations. The space in the memory will be double for n var char, whenever we say n var char, because it has to store universal code. So, if our applications are large scale applications, so we normally prefer n var char. If they are mid level applications, so we go for var char. Is this clear? So whenever you want to store a string, so norm, normally we have seen var char in our uh, previous database table, we use var char, var char 10, var char 50. Next, numbers, we store numbers. So what are the various numbers that we have? I can store <coughs> integer, it has some range, a value from this, to that big int so integer but a bigger value small int integer but smaller range of value tiny int again very small range of value now what are the ranges we will see that but we use all these things to store numbers to store we normally use integers we normally use integers ranges we will see now if you want to store something in points use decimal or numeric again ranges differs we will see the ranges floats and reals if if we have some <coughs> See, uh, if, if you want to store salary, it will not be very huge value, right? So you can use float or real. If it is a very huge value, that 
something into 10 power 20 so very huge value if, if i want to store then i will use decimal or numeric right if value is not very huge then i'll use float or real points we have separate data types for handling money and small money but we hardly use this for storing money also we use float normally in our applications we use float we will see ranges i'm going to show you ranges so you need not to worry much about remembering ranges right we will we'll try to see what are the ranges so in this do anybody have any doubt simple thing right? if you want if i want to store a string you you just analyze what length of the string can come in this location or in this column what are the various options in future what will be the value maybe our application may grow big and in future we need to store arabic letters so then what we need to do so you should think all those things and take the decision we have various options in front of date time we need to store date time we have date which does not have time we have time that will not have date we have date time it will have both we have date time to a larger range of date time date time will also have a range you can store a date from this day to that day we will see ranges date time to can store larger range of dates so 0 0 0 0 0 to something so we will see those ranges small date time again date time but small range is this clear just a range in date time date time to small date time ranges differ what are the ranges we will see all the ranges i'll show you at once there is one more type that is unique identifier so normally if i take integer it has some range right if i make employee id as int it has some range now after that range if i have some more employees then my application will break is it not something i want that should not have any range limits but it should be unique throughout the world or throughout that particular database throughout the world means throughout that particular database or to that particular table so we use unique identifier it will automatically generate a unique string combination of letters and numbers so we we call it as unique identifier so in our large scale applications normally we put our primary keys as unique identifiers where you have millions of records if you have a database or normally we use it in data warehouses see databases are of two types one is the database that we are working on our application is working on that database so we call it as OLTP online transaction processing but there is our application is say some uh, 30 years old application so we'll have millions of records if I want a report for past 10 years and if I run that query on this database then my application will hang because some other user those who are trying to access they'll get stuck so what we do we create another database we call it as OLAP online analysis and processing so same data we will dump into another database and those whoever wants old reports will extract from there that's why I, I don't know whether you have seen or not in your online banking system you cannot uh, get your um, statement of full one year at once it, it will break into two months max you can have two months of statement online you can download that if you want last one year bank statement online you cannot do that right why because application may hang in last one year you might have done millions of transactions 
So to generate that report, it will take long time. So that is OLAP. So basically in our OLAPs, we use unique identifier where we have millions of records. And that is used for all analysis for generating reports, SSRS, SSIS, SSAS, you might have heard about all these things. Anyway, that is different track, that is data warehousing track. So we will see what is unique identifier also. Now for ranges, let us go through this. This is MySQL data type ranges. We don't want that. This is SQL Server data type ranges. You see that yeah, fix with with character string. Maximum I can store eight thousand characters. So I can say care of max. So eight thousand. Where care variable bit. Same 8000. Because it is variable, it will take 2 bytes extra to maintain the location. Like how many characters we have to maintain that location. Because length is variable, right? So what is the length we should maintain? So that's why it requires 2 bytes extra. Where care max. If I say where care max to max, I can store so many characters. Text, I can store 2 GB of text. Getting? N care, universal. I can store 4000 characters. Half of this, you see that. N where care, 4000. N where care max, so many characters and text 2 GB data same way you have binary zeros and ones 8000 bytes I can store where binary variable length where binary max 2 GB maximum 2 GB of file I can store if I take where binary for image again 2 GB for numeric, for bit we have 0, 1 or null. Tiny int range from 0 to, are you getting? Small int, this is the range, minus 32,000 to this. If I want to store a value minus 35,000, I cannot store. Or if I want to store 35,000, I cannot store using small int. Then I should go for int. This is the range for int. For big int, this is the range. Good. For decimal, minus 10 power 38 plus 10 power 38. So such a big number in powers, 10 powers. This is the range for small money. This is the range for money. Float. You have points. So minus 1.7 into 10 power 9. 9 E means that. Sorry. Minus 1.79 into 10 power 308. 2 plus 1.9 into 10 power 308. So E means 10 power. So such a big number I can store in float if my number is in points. Real is double of this. Are you getting? So that's why we normally use floats for storing numbers. Date time range. I can store date time from January 1, 1753 to December 31st, 9999. This is the range. 
in some interviews they may ask date time range that's it other than this they will not ask but it is not a good interview question so they may ask what is the range for date time so this is the range or maybe in written test if for freshers if they have written test so there they make it what is the range for date time so this is the range to the accuracy of 3.33 milliseconds to that accuracy i can store the date date time date time to has larger range that means from january 1 0001 to this if i want to store any date prior to this i cannot use date time are you getting my point if i want to store january 12th 1672 i cannot store it in date time so i should go for date time two small date time again shorter range from january 1 1900 to june 6 2079 that is the range for small range for only date is this no time here time means anything 100 nanoseconds to the accuracy of 100 nanoseconds right hmm. so this is enough for date time and data types so basically what we use we use varicare in mid-level application and varicare in large application and for numbers we normally use integers and for points we use float and we use date time normally we use date time and we use unique identifier so these are the famous and we use boolean type for true and false right so that is what we have bit one zero man so what is a uh, small date time small date time again range only the difference is range small date time has less range Small date time range is from January 1, 1900 to... Got it, got it, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, before we proceed further, I want to discuss something related to columns. Employee ID. Should I make it varchar or integer? integer integer okay it is good to make it integer if it is okay with the organization standards in some organization they will have an employee ID as EMP or something some code and at that scenario I need to make it varchar now do always remember we make column as integers if and only if we want to perform some arithmetic operations with that column integer or float if you want to perform some addition multiplication subtraction with that column contact number it is better i will make it as uh, where care right even though it has numbers but i'll not make it integer or big int because i don't want to add or subtract contact numbers but selling price cost price i can also make it as where care there is no problem i can make it where care and store 600 600 is also a string right but there are a lot of scenarios where I need to multiply or divide or subtract this selling price so normally I make it as float or integers are you getting my point we use numbers for a column if and only if we want to perform some arithmetic operations on it right Now, uh, there is one more point. 
age should i make a column for age in my database table yeah see normally there is age is a derived column age is a derived column age keeps on changing daily age will change right so we normally do not make columns for derived attributes that means you have some existing columns from this column i can calculate some value so i normally do not create a column for that i have date of birth whenever i want age i can calculate age with the help of date of birth so i will not make a column for age in my database design are you getting the point say profit profit can be calculated with selling price minus cost price so i have selling price and cost price so i don't want to make a separate column for profit whenever i want profit i can say selling price minus cost price i'll get the profit are you getting my point so these are your, your derived columns so you should think prior to designing table what are the columns that we need and what are the columns that we do not need <coughs> say address if i create a table for employee address if i have a column as address and i can store the address this dash this comma locality comma city comma state comma country then pin code in single column is that fine i have a single column for address and everything i'll store it in that i'll have address whenever i want but it is not a good practice why because tomorrow admin may ask a report saying that i want to know all the customers from city hyderabad but you have not maintained any column for hyderabad everything is mixed in this single column so that's why what we do we have separate columns door number that's why separate text box you might have seen door number city landmark is also separate then state then country pin code is also separate we call it as composite attribute attribute may have multiple values so we create multiple columns for that or not multiple values you can say multiple parts not address is one but it has multiple parts like name name is one but it has multiple parts first name last name surname right <coughs> so we analyze all these things then we create the table so that in future if admin asks for a report based upon gender then you will, you may say that sir we have not maintained any column for the gender or they may ask report based upon the country then you may you may say that we have only one column address and so that's why whenever you are talking taking a project and talking about the requirements so on day one you ask about the reports what are the reports that you want because that information may not be valid or may not be important at the time of taking the requirement at the time of creating the application but that information may be valid or important at the time of generating reports so at the end if they tell these are the reports i want and that time you may say that we have not maintained these columns then i need to re architect or restructure the complete project then it will be a very headache task so at day one itself you should ask what are the reports you want based on what attributes you want you tell me so we have a deal and finalize reports on the day one itself so these are the few things that you need to take care at the time of developing any database creating any database is this clear fine okay then we'll proceed for the now i have another table 
and some data in this. Is this data valid? Employee ID, employee name, gender, email, contact, department ID, department name, description. Fine. This is valid. And what is the primary key in this? Primary key? Department ID? Employee ID is primary key. Right? If I say employee 2, means what? I am referring to a single record. So employee ID is primary key. This is fine. But there is some ambiguity in this. Ambiguity in the sense there is, it can be enhanced. It has some flaws. This table can be enhanced. There is some problem with this information. or you can say performance issue or a storage issue we have. What is that? See, in a department, see, Ahmed belongs to thousand department. Peter belongs to thousand department. That is fine. Department name development, repeating, data repetition. Description, data repetition. So if you have thousand employees in a department, then I should repeat this for thousand times. Development, 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 right? Description I should repeat. So okay, I have huge space, there is no worry. But if I want to update the department name, then how many update queries I need to run? Thousand update queries I need to run. Are you getting my point? So, there is some ambiguity here. So, what I can do now to solve this problem, I can go for breaking this single table into multiple tables. One is employee table, where I will have employee ID, employee name, gender, email, contact number, department ID, I will repeat, there is no problem. And here employee ID is primary key and the other table that I'll get is department table. Where department ID is primary key. Department ID, department name, description. Now we have broken a table into multiple tables to solve data repetition problem. This process is called as normalization. We call it as normalization. There are various normal forms, first normal form, second normal form, third normal form, bicycle normal form. So we are not going to dig all those things. We'll understand. Our normal form will be the best normal form. Don't worry about that. Right? So here in department table we have department ID as primary key. Is it not? Now, in employee table, we have department ID. Now, can I add department ID as 1005 in employee table? Can department ID be 1005 in employee table? Why? We have, to add this. we have to add it in department table. That means department ID, whatever we have in our employee table, is referring to the department ID that we have in our department table. Are you getting my point? So this department ID of employee table is now referring to the department ID of department table. So column in a table refers to primary key of another table. Then this column is called as foreign key. We call it as Foreign. Here we are getting the values from foreign, from other table.
right so this is the relationship that we have between these two tables so which is parent which is child department is parent and department is parent and employee is child so normally we have child tables on the left and parent tables on the right normally we have that or master table child table you can say this department id is foreign key so have you understood foreign key what is foreign key foreign key is a key in a table which refers to primary key of another table are you all getting this what is foreign key have you understood foreign key is a key in a table which refers to the primary key of another table now foreign key is exactly reverse of your primary key foreign key can have duplicate values and foreign key can also be null regret my point foreign key can also be null you have hired an employee and you have not decided the department yet or you have not decided the project yet or this employee was earlier working on that project now he is on bench so his project id is non null so foreign key can have null values foreign key can have duplicate values are you getting <clears throat> foreign key foreign key is a copy of a primary key that has been exported from one relation that means from one table into another to represent the existing of existence of relationship between them you have to buy hard this if you want to clear interviews are you explain that for fresher sam talking about a foreign key is copy of whole of its primary key that means if primary key is composite foreign key will also be composite we have learned right composite primary keys if primary key is composite then foreign key will also be composite but for composite foreign keys all the columns should be null or all the columns should not be null that is the rule because foreign key has null values foreign key can have null values so if foreign key is composite say it has two columns then both the column should have some value or both the column should be null you cannot have something like this one value is null and one value is non null you cannot have that foreign key values do not usually have to be unique as i told they are they need not to be unique Uh, if we have uh, parent as a composite, uh -huh. if we have a parent table, it has mm -hmm. composite columns. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So in the parent, in the parent, uh, in the child table, mm -hmm. the columns will, the two columns will be the as uh, parent. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the two columns will come down here. Exactly. Foreign key can also be null. a composite foreign key cannot have some attributes null and other non null what i told just now is this okay do you see something missing do we have any any employees for 1002 no is it okay hmm? yes yes it's okay i have a department i have created just but i do not have any employees in that department there is no problem so this is normalization breaking a table into multiple table there are a lot of advantages of normalization but there is one drawback can anybody tell me what is the drawback the back is whenever i want the information then i should travel through two tables earlier if i want information 
I have everything in one table. I'll say select star from that table. I'll get all the information. Now, if I want to know the department name of Ahmed, then I should travel from this table to that table. Ahmed, okay. Ahmed department ID is thousand. Okay, thousand department name is development. So I should I should travel through two tables. Take it in that will lead to writing a join query that will lead to writing a join query have you understood why do we need joins that is the reason we have normalized our database so that i should have uh, you know efficient structure but whenever i want to extract the information then i need to join these things <coughs> Now, we will we will see that join and what is join, but you have understood the advantage and disadvantage, both the things. Now, update and delete constraints, let us try to understand. So, as of now, let us think about two tables only. Let us not think about three tables. When we have three tables, then we will see that you can have multiple foreign keys in a table. There is no problem. One table, one foreign key, another table, another foreign key. If that is required, you can have. If that is the scenario, you can have. There is no problem. Now, update and delete constraint. Say, for example, what will happen if I delete this thousand record? This is parent table, right? What will happen if I delete this thousand record? Or what, what will happen if I update this thousand to one thousand five? So it is up to us to decide what should happen. If I delete thousand, which is parent record, then all its child will become orphan. Is it not? All the child records will become orphan. If I delete this thousand, then what will happen to these values? So there are four scenarios or four ways to handle that. There are four ways to handle that. Have you understood the problem first of all? Update and delete. If I update or delete parent record, then what should happen to its child? So there are four ways to handle that. no action means what it will not allow you to delete parent record unless and until you delete all the child records it will say that you first delete all the child records then you delete the parent record so that is no action got the point so if i want to delete thousand record then what i should do i should first of all delete one and two then I should go for deleting thousand. That is no action. Second is set null. Set so in no action it will not delete the record unless until you delete child records. In set null, in set null, if I delete this record thousand, the record will get deleted, and it will set these thousand values to null. Are you getting my point? It will set all these thousand values to null automatically. But it will delete the parent record. Next is set default. Set default means for department ID you might have set some default value. If I delete parent record, it will set it will take the default value. That is set default we have seen how to set default value are you getting and the last is cascade that we never suggest cascade means if you delete parent record it will automatically delete all its child records if you delete this thousand it will automatically delete these two records that is cascade on delete or cascade on update if you update 1000 to 1005 it will automatically update all this to 1005. 
if you update this to 1005 and you say set default it will take the default value if you update this to 1005 if you set null it will set all these values to null if you update this to 1005 and if you say no action so it will not allow you to update it to 1005 understood both the both the scenarios set default set null cascade and no action let us see a demo of this then the things will be more clear employee table now i'll create one more table department did int the name <coughs> bear care description bear care 500 Now, I will make, I will save this table, table name is department, I will say okay, department ID is primary key, right, I will right click and say set as primary key, I will save this. Now, I will go to employee table, so I will just right click on tables and I will say refresh, so I, I get both the tables. Now in employee table I should have one more column that is department ID. Is it not? Then I'll say int type should be same. If name differs there is no problem. It is int. It should also be int. And I'll say allow null. Why? Because already we have lot of records. So it should take null value. So I'll say save. Now I'll go for employee. Right click. I did top 200 rows. I'll close this. Again, I'll right click employee and I'll say edit top 200 rows. You see department ID is null. Do we have any departments? We do not have any departments. Now, if I say department ID 1000, will it take? Yes or no? No. Yes. 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 It will take. We never made relationship, right? Just we created columns. Did we make okay. a relationship? If we think there is a relationship, then it will not take the relationship, right? It will not work as per our thinking. We need to do everything. You need to make the relationship. So how to make the relationship? I'll just make it null first of all. How to make the relationship? The best approach, go to database diagrams, explore this, say yes, right click, new database diagram. First of all, I'll add child table, then I'll add parent table. Anything you can do, you add both the tables, close. Now you can make the relationship. So what is the relationship you tell me? Department ID is acting as a foreign key here. This is database diagram. This is database diagram. You have two tables, but there is no relationship. Do you see any relationship? No. So I'll just select department ID. The easiest way I'm showing you. Select, drag it, drop on department ID in your employee table. Now it will ask, primary key table is department, that is right. From here we are taking department ID, that is right. If you want to change, you can change, but I don't want to change. Foreign key table is employee. And we are making relationship on department ID. Are you all getting? I'll say okay. So there is a foreign key relationship. 
and in this you have insert and update specification i'll explore this delete rule update rule what do you want to set by default it is no action delete rule cascade set null set default so for delete rule i'll say no action but for update rule i'll say cascade so automatically it will update are you getting i'm showing all the combinations you need lot of practice for this so anyway we have video recorded so if you miss some steps or if you do not remember you can just have a walk through but it is very simple everything is on right click i'll say okay and i'll say save it is saying that it is going to save make a relationship between these two tables i'll say okay yes fine if you have data then there will be some problem if you have some already you have thousand and you are trying to save it will not allow you to save why because ambiguous data that's why i have made that value as null are you getting now i'll right click and say execute now i'll add thousand will it allow me now it will not allow because this is the child table if you want to have anything in the child table first create a parent record then add that as child now i'll add thousand or hundred department name development dev team now i will add 100 here fine are you getting the relationship between these two tables i'll add 100 that's fine i'll add one more department 101 testing enemies of developers there is always a cold war right so now i'll just go for 1001 1001 sorry 101 so this is fine right now if i say 102 it will not take you don't have that department now let us try to test both the constraints delete constraint and update con constraint for delete what we said no action right if i try to delete parent record okay if i try to delete this this record will it allow me to delete yes or no this is child record right so there is right. it will allow delete there is no problem but if I try to delete this, so it says that the delete statement conflicted with the reference constraint. The conflict occurred in the database. So you cannot delete. What about update? If I update this to 105, it will, will it allow me to update? Yeah, it will update the child as well. It will update here. What else will it do? It will also update the child. It will also update in child. Has it updated? Why? I should refresh. Right click, say execute. It has got updated. So this is cascade on update. If you understood, making relationships, primary key, foreign key, and all our constraints. We'll take a break then we will go for database design techniques after the break 10 minutes 15 minutes break then i'll ping back okay so those who are online are you all back yes ma'am sir Fine. <laughs> 
now i have some requirement with me that is i want an application for stock management so what do i get i get some requirement i get some requirement a bookshop contains multiple books a bookshop shop contain multiple books a customer can buy multiple books so i have a bookshop and i have n number of asp.net books n number of adio.net books n number of entity framework books and a customer can buy multiple books a customer can buy one asp.net two adio.net and three entity framework books they can buy an old customer can visit again and again there are chances of an old customer coming to the shop and buying some other books books are sold depending on its availability so at the time of selling the books i'll see whether i have those books in my stock or not if they are not available then it will be out of stock so i want a database diagram for this or database for this so how to design the database now that is the question how to design database if you have pen and paper with you i'll give you 4 minutes you can just design the database what you feel is good and those who are online they can design it and send a screenshot on whatsapp group okay got some something some table still doing okay 
got something book customer order books customers book ready customer you get anything okay fine those who are online do you get anything Yes, yeah, please send the screenshot or name, name the table that you've got. Okay, um, I'm going to send the snapshot now. Yeah, do that. <coughs> customer customer address customer contact customer type book product fine see uh, as per our requirement, what we have, what should be the approach? These are the two things. My database design will be as per my requirement and what should be the approach. And the database design may differ from person to person or from architect to architect based upon their experiences. Right. And or based upon the requirement of that particular project. But 99% there is some standard approach. That is, 
if you want to design any database there are two things that you need to identify whether it is a database of such a small application which has two tables or a very big application which has some thousand tables irrespective to this whatever may be the size of project there are two approaches or two things that you need to identify whether you design database or you design classes same logic will be applied for class designing too if you want to design classes or if you want to design database there are two things that you should identify one is object what are the objects in this requirement you need to identify and second thing what is the relationship among objects that you need to identify if you identify these two things then you are done with your class designing you are done with your database design. what is the second second thing manzu second point is relationship among objects okay one is objects another is relationship among objects so this is the difference in our uh, academics we'll have in uh, you know our exam questions like what is class what is object but in your real time you will have a scenario you should identify what is object in this so in this can i take shop as an object shop as an object yes now here we should think whenever you are taking anything as an object do we have do we have multiple shops are we talking about multiple shops here no we are talking no. about single shop so we are going to develop an application for this particular shop so no need of you know treating shop as an object but book can book be an object yes yes why because we are talking about multiple books for this particular shop see if we have a scenario where we uh, we have an uh, you know we have a person who has multiple shops in multiple cities and in each shop they have multiple books if that is the scenario then shop can be treated as one object but here scenario is not that we have a single shop so let us not treat shop as an object we are making an application for this shop shop is an application now for this shop there is an application so book is an object next can customer be an object customer is an object yes yes what else can be an object availability that's it these are the two objects book and customer if you want anything availability it will be with book will, will be associated with book so as of now from this requirement we can extract only two objects book and customer now what is the relationship between these objects see always do remember universal rule for any kind of application small to large there are two relationships that's it there are two relationships one is one to many one is one to many another is many to many that's it if you take any application 
any project throughout the universe of any technology you will find only two types of relationships one to many and many to many <clears throat> one to many and many to many can you give any example of one to many relationship class teacher class teacher the relationship between teacher and student you want to say one teacher has many students but one student can have multiple teachers also right so it is not mean one to many can you give some example of one to many can you Uh, gym and coach. Gym and coach. One coach has many. Okay. Okay. Do you have multiple coaches? Okay. Can you give some example of one to many? Okay. What about parent-child relationship? Sorry, parent? Child. Parent-child. One parent has multiple exactly. children. Parent and child, one too many. Car brand and multiple types of cars. Exactly, but one car cannot belong to multiple brands. It will belong to a particular brand. That is right. Good example. Do you have any example? You thought about that. We learned something today. Department and employee. Is it not one too many? One department can have multiple employees. And one employee cannot belong to multiple departments. One class can have multiple students. But one student cannot belong to multiple classes. Are you getting my point? It is one to many. One customer can have multiple accounts. But one account cannot belong to multiple customers. If that is joint account is different case. I can have an account in HDFC bank, I can have an account in Access bank, I can have an account in ICIC bank. So this is one to many relationship. Are you all getting? One person has multiple dresses, but one dress cannot belong to multiple person. One person can have multiple properties. Lot of examples. You, you can think and explore that. Okay. Can you give some example of many to many relationship? Childs in chairs in auditorium. How? Previous example of student and course can be taken. In one course you can have multiple students and one student can opt for multiple courses. Many to many relationship. Is it meaningful? I will give one example. Vehicles at my home and my family members. The relationship between vehicles at my home and family members is many to many one family member can use any vehicle and when vehicle can be used by any of the family members so I have given this example I want you to give some some other okay you give one example you you give some other example many to many relationship I can go to a particular 
No. Furniture of house. Furniture. You have furniture, plates. <laughs> no, take some other scenario. I want you to think. I want to open all the doors that have got closed for past 10 years. Think. Give one example, many to many. We can take we can take this object as well, right? One uh, the book and customer. Okay, exactly. Book and customer. What we have is many to many relationship. One customer can purchase n types of books, right? N types of books. He can purchase the ASP.NET, ADO.NET, C# .net. and one book can be bought by n number of customers. Ten customers can buy ASP.NET book. Is it not? So it is many to many relationship. Got everyone. So you have thousands of examples in your day to day life. You see thousands of scenarios where you have many to many relationships. Fine. Let us see this relationship here. How to identify? We'll read in this way. One to many. One customer can buy multiple books. Is it true? Yes. N number of customers can buy same type of book. Is it yes? Yes. yes. If two things are yes, then this is yes. This is many to many relationship. This is many to many relationship. There is one more relationship, one to one. Can you give some example of one to one relationship? Yes. Yeah. Okay. One to one relationship. ATM card and PIN code. Exactly. One to one relationship. Employee email. Employee and name. One to one relationship. Right. Employee and contact number. One to one relationship. Are you getting my point? So whenever this one to one relationship, we, we club everything in that single table. Employee and address. So address is in employee table. Are you getting my point? So that's why we have not spoken anything about one to one relationship. Are you getting my point? That's why we have not spoken about one to one relationship. So whenever this one to one relationship, we'll add it to the same table. We'll add it to the same table. But when we have one to many relationship, what should we do? And when we have many to many relationship, what we should do? We should understand that. So first thing, have you understood identifying objects and identifying relationships? Now, based upon objects and relationships, I should design the database. What should I do? The first thing here, we have three rules. Are you getting? Here we have three rules. Three key rules for relationships. So from relationship, you, you are designing database. Objects and relationships, you are designing database. You have three key rules. What are the rules? First, after identifying the objects and relationships among them, apply these three rules to create database structure or apply these three rules to create class design also. So class designing will also have three rules and in class designing also you need to identify objects and relationships. The first rule, one table for each object. First rule is one table for each object. How many objects we have? So you will have two tables. One is book, another is custom. Book ID is primary key, customer ID is primary key. First rule, one object for or one table for each object. Second, what if we have one to many relationship? We have seen in one department many employees. In one to many relationship, one will become master table, that is department. 
एंड मेनी विल बिकम चाइल्ड टेबल एंड प्राइमरी की ऑफ वन दैट इज प्राइमरी की ऑफ मास्टर टेबल विल एक्ट एज ए फॉरन की इन चाइल्ड टेबल लाइक डिपार्टमेंट एंड एम्प्लॉय रिलेशनशिप वॉज वन टू मेनी एंड दिस वॉज अवर डेटा बेस्ड डायग्राम डू यू रिमेंबर दिस when you have one to many relationship one will be the master table or parent table and many will be the child table and primary key of one will be acting as a foreign key in child table or many so this will indicate the relationship if you have one to many relationship what we need to do you need to do this kind of thing in the tables got this point is it confusing you created two tables department and employee now two objects department now we saw what is the relationship one to many okay for one to many means i should take the primary key of one that is department and make it foreign key in many that is employee that is your one to many relation this is how we show one to many relationship now how what about many to many relationship that is the third rule Say student and subject is many to many relationship, right? So how to show many to many relationship? In one to many, we took the primary key of one and made it as a foreign key in many. But many to many relationship. Okay. Exactly. In many to many relationship, I need to create a new table. many to many relationship both the objects will become master and there will be one more new table called as transaction table or child table with primary keys of both the masters student id subject id marks we have seen in our day one this way student table subject table we have two tables student and subject two objects two tables for many to many relationship i need to have one more transaction table or one more child table where i will have student id from student table subject id from subject table and you have marks whatever you want to add date of exam what all you want to add you can add so whenever there is many to many relationship there will be a new table that you need to create that is called as transaction table and whenever there is one to many relationship you need not to create any new table in existing objects you need to show relationship is this clear everyone then for our scenario objects book and customer relationship many to many so this customer so one object one table another object another table now for many to many relationship what should happen i need a new table that is order table and here customer id act as a foreign key here and book id will act as a foreign key here quantity we are maintaining in book So that we need to have stock. How many books do we have? <coughs> Whenever a customer purchases a book, we'll reduce that by one. Price per unit we have here. This books, we have books. So the price of that particular book is this. And this order table, this customer bought this book because customer is visiting again and again. So I'll have a single record of customer. i'll track that customer this customer bought this book and so many in so many quantity and this was the date of order on this date he bought these many books this is your order table or your transaction table is it meaningful now have you understood so that's it if you understand these two relationships you can design any database for one to many and many to many like you have a problem yes like one customer can buy multiple books yes so each time there will be a new order id exactly for every yes if, if he is buying like 
one and he buys two books. Exactly. So he'll have two order IDs. Two order IDs. Two, two books. That is what we have for this requirement. We have that. Too. For this requirement, we have that. Is it clear? Per visit or per book is one order ID. As per this design, there is no problem. Fine. Anything else? So here, just you try to understand when you have many to many relationship, what should we do? What should we do when we have many to many relationship? Any doubt in this? No doubt. Fine. If, if you want to enhance this, you add something else as your primary key. Let not order ID be primary key. Some OID be primary key. So you can repeat order ID. Then there will be no issue. In order 1000, he bought 101 book. In same order 1000, he bought 102 book. In same order 1000, he bought one more book. If you want to handle that scenario, instead of making order ID as primary key, you make something else as primary. Is this clear? And you can repeat the order ID so that you can track. <coughs> but as of now, let us not go into that specifications. Here I want to explain that when you have many to many relationship, what should we do? This is what we need to. Is it okay? This will be your yes. diagram. Next. This is task 2 and this is your assignment. Design database for a toy manufacturing company. A toy manufacturing company manufactures different types of toys. Company has several manufacturing plants. One plant is in Telangana, one plant is in Delhi, one plant is in US, one plant is in UK. So you, multiple manufacturing plants. Each plant manufactures different types of toys. Each plant manufactures different types of toys. Say the plant that is in India, they manufactures all clay toys. The plant which is in US, they manufacture all plastic toys. So different types of toys. A customer can place order for these toys. Customer can place order for these toys. And each customer has multiple ship to address. There are chances, right? I can, uh, you know, order a gift to my cousin on his birthday. So ship to address can, you can have multiple ship to address. So customer can have multiple ship to address. This is the requirement. This is little complex now. I'm increasing the complexity. First was employee department, one to many. Another was book customer, many to many. Now it has few more objects, more than two objects and little complexities. So this is your assignment. So try to work out on this and send me your database design. Then we will try to understand these things tomorrow. Tomorrow in the sense, tomorrow is Saturday, right? <clears throat> Normally Saturday, Sunday is off for us, first thing. And in, in any week, if we have any off, that class will be taken on any weekend as compensation. So Saturday, Sunday will be normally off. This Monday, I will be out of station. So you will not have class on Monday also. We will have our next class on Tuesday. And this Monday's class will be compensated on coming Saturday, next week Saturday. Are you getting the things? So 
नेक्स्ट सेशन विल बी ऑन ट्यूजडे इन दिस थ्री डेज वॉट यू नीड टू डू आई विल गिव एक्सेस टू एच टी एम एल सी एस एस जावा स्क्रिप्ट दीज आर द टू वीडियो कोर्सेज दैट वी हैव बेसिक कोर्सेस सो यू नीड टू गो थ्रू दिज वीडियो कोर्सेस एंड ट्राई टू वर्क आउट ऑन दिस इन दिस थ्री डेज अपार्ट फ्रॉम वॉट ऑल वी हैव लर्न this is this will be the task for this 3 days so tuesday we will have our next session so tuesday is 28th jan so our next session will be on 28th january same time fine if you have anything to ask you can ask will you send the task to us task yeah. number 2 to us Exactly, and send the screenshot on the group. I'll show. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, you have to enroll. Enroll. You you need to register with your email address and all those. You'll get access. That's all. Yeah. You also ping me your. Uh, yeah. You you ping me uh, with your uh, contact number on WhatsApp. then i'll add you to that group our current batch group we have so i'll add you to that i think you are in that group and i have sent you a separate link for that course so you sent to the group itself no separate link also i have sent you in the whatsapp you see registration link i have sent you separate private code yes private that is the link okay do anybody have any kind of doubt so today you need to practice uh, what all the things that we have done and the second thing is do this assignment right this is the assignment for your or this is the task for today's session fine so that's it for today thank you very much